It was a calm evening in the city. The streets, mostly empty, had the usual late-night tranquility, with only a few cars passing by. The lights from the buildings created a soft glow, reflecting off the damp pavement after a recent rain. For the two black police captains, both off-duty and dressed in plain clothes, it was a rare night to relax and enjoy some quiet time together. They had spent years serving the community with pride, each one earning their rank through dedication and hard work. Tonight, they were simply enjoying a quiet evening out, but their peaceful night was about to take a sharp turn. Unbeknownst to them, a lone patrol car circled nearby, driven by an officer with an entirely different mindset. Officer McClellan, a man known for his harsh tactics and questionable decisions, was on edge. His career had been marked by a series of complaints that often went ignored or brushed aside by those in power. Tonight, he was on the prowl, looking for any excuse to exert his authority. As the two captains walked along the sidewalk, deep in conversation, McClellan's patrol car slowed as it approached them. From a distance, they appeared to him as just two black men walking late at night. No reason for concern, no reason to look any closer. But for McClellan, their race alone was enough to catch his attention. His instincts, deeply rooted in prejudice, kicked in immediately. Without hesitation, he turned his vehicle sharply, pulling over to the side of the road. He watched them for a moment longer, his mind racing with assumptions about who they might be and what they might be doing. To him, they were already suspects in some imagined crime, and he was eager to assert his authority. What should have been a calm and uneventful night for the captains was about to turn into a confrontation that neither of them could have predicted. The two captains, Captain Jonathan Reed and Captain Marcus Turner, had both been serving the police force for over two decades. They were not just colleagues, but close friends, having risen through the ranks together. Both were highly respected within the department for their leadership, dedication, and commitment to fair policing. Tonight, though, they were not wearing their uniforms. Instead, they were dressed in casual clothes, enjoying a rare evening off. Jonathan, tall with broad shoulders and a commanding presence, had always been a symbol of strength and integrity within the department. He had faced discrimination early in his career, but had fought back with excellence and determination. Marcus, slightly shorter but equally strong in character, was known for his calm demeanor and sharp intellect. Together they made an imposing pair, but tonight they were simply two friends enjoying some time away from the stress of their roles. They had just left a small cafe where they had spent the last few hours talking about their families, upcoming plans, and the state of the community they served. They were heading toward their cars, parked a few blocks away, unaware of the eyes now watching them closely. The evening air was cool, and the city lights reflected in the puddles on the ground, adding a soft, almost peaceful glow to their walk. As they crossed the street, Marcus noticed the patrol car slowing down nearby. He glanced at it briefly but thought nothing of it. They were both off duty, and despite their rank, they had no reason to be concerned. Jonathan, deep in conversation, didn't notice the car at first, but soon he too sensed that something wasn't right. The patrol car was following them, creeping slowly along the curb. Both men exchanged a look, silently acknowledging the tension. They had been through enough in their careers to recognize the beginnings of a situation that could go wrong quickly, but they had no idea just how wrong things were about to get. Officer McClellan gripped the steering wheel tightly as he continued to watch the two men walking down the street. His mind raced with suspicion, fueled by the deep-seated prejudice that had colored much of his career. In his eyes, the two men were up to something. They had to be. It didn't matter that they were simply walking, talking, and minding their own business. To McClellan, their presence alone was enough to justify his growing sense of unease. He decided to act. Without a second thought, he flicked on his patrol lights, the red and blue flashing against the buildings, casting an eerie glow on the quiet street. The sound of the siren pierced the night, startling Jonathan and Marcus, who turned to see the patrol car now pulling up beside them. Both men paused, exchanging a look of disbelief. They hadn't done anything wrong. There was no reason for this. McClellan stepped out of his car, his hand already resting on the holster of his gun. His expression was hard his eyes filled with distrust as he sized up the two men standing before him. Evening, gentlemen, he said, his voice dripping with condescension. 
Mind telling me what you're doing out here at this time of night? Jonathan and Marcus, both seasoned captains who had handled countless confrontations in their time, immediately recognized the tone. This wasn't a friendly inquiry. This was something darker. Marcus, ever the calm one, stepped forward slightly, keeping his hands visible. We're just heading home, officer, he said evenly. Is there a problem? McClellan's eyes narrowed. He didn't like the way Marcus spoke to him. Too calm, too composed. It challenged the control he thought he had in this situation. ID, both of you, he demanded, ignoring the question. Now. As McClellan demanded their identification, his eyes flitted over the two men, his gaze filled with suspicion and thinly veiled contempt. To him, they weren't professionals who had dedicated their lives to law enforcement. They were just two black men out late at night, and that was enough to justify his aggression. His posture was rigid, and his hand remained near his holster, a clear indication of how he viewed the encounter. Jonathan and Marcus both knew the drill. They had seen officers like McClellan before, men who let their prejudices guide their actions, men who used their badge as a tool for intimidation rather than protection. But what McClellan didn't know was that these two men were not ordinary citizens. They were captains in the very department he worked for, and they had far more authority and experience than he could ever imagine. Jonathan, the taller of the two, exchanged a brief glance with Marcus before reaching slowly for his wallet. His movements were deliberate, his eyes never leaving McClellan's face. There's no need for this, officer, Jonathan said calmly, though his voice carried a subtle edge of warning. We're not doing anything wrong. McClellan bristled at Jonathan's calm defiance. I'll decide if you're doing something wrong, he snapped, stepping closer, his hand still hovering near his weapon. And right now, you look pretty suspicious to me. Marcus, ever the diplomat, tried to defuse the situation. We're both law enforcement, he said, hoping to calm the officer down. There's no need for this kind of treatment. But McClellan's face darkened at Marcus's words. Oh, so now you're cops, huh? You think that means you don't have to follow the rules? Let's see some proof. The tension in the air was palpable. McClellan's hostility was unmistakable as he waited for Jonathan and Marcus to produce their identification. Both men were familiar with how situations like this could escalate, even with their credentials. They had seen it happen to others, and now it was happening to them. Despite being high-ranking captains, their race made them targets in McClellan's eyes and his aggressive stance showed that he was ready to escalate at any moment. Jonathan handed over his ID first, his expression calm but wary. Marcus followed suit, both of them moving slowly and deliberately to avoid giving McClellan any reason to act rashly. McClellan snatched the IDs from their hands, his eyes narrowing as he scanned the names and titles printed on the cards. But his expression didn't soften. If anything, it hardened. To him, their credentials didn't matter. In his mind, they were still suspects. What are two cops doing out here dressed like that? McClellan sneered, waving their IDs dismissively. You think being police gives you a free pass? Not tonight. Jonathan clenched his jaw, his patience wearing thin. He had dealt with men like McClellan before, but it was never easy. The injustice of it all, the way they were being treated simply because of their appearance, cut deep but he knew better than to let his anger show. This was a dangerous game, and they were walking a fine line. We're just heading home, officer, Jonathan said again, his voice controlled but firm. There's no reason for this. We've shown you our IDs. We're not a threat. But McClellan wasn't listening. His mind was already made up. Turn around, both of you, he barked, pulling out his handcuffs. You're under arrest for obstruction of justice. Jonathan and Marcus were no strangers to conflict, but this situation was infuriating. Despite showing their identification as police captains, Officer McClellan was determined to arrest them on baseless charges. Both men had spent their careers protecting the rights of others, but now they found themselves on the receiving end of an abuse of power, fueled by nothing more than racism. Jonathan glanced at Marcus, signaling for calm. They were both trained to handle high-pressure situations, and they knew that reacting with anger would only escalate things further. McClellan, with his handcuffs at the ready, was looking for a reason to assert more control, and they were not going to give him the satisfaction. The captains had seen this kind of behavior before, and it always followed a predictable pattern 
except this time, the tables would soon turn. We're not resisting, officer, Marcus said, his tone level but authoritative. But you should know you're making a mistake. McClellan smirked at Marcus's words, clearly taking them as a challenge. Mistake? The only mistake I see is two men thinking they're above the law. Hands behind your back now. Jonathan, still maintaining his composure, spoke next. You're arresting us for obstruction, but we've done nothing to obstruct your investigation. This isn't a lawful arrest, and you know it. But McClellan's mind was already made up. His anger and prejudice had clouded his judgment. He roughly grabbed Marcus's wrist and pulled it behind his back, snapping the handcuffs into place. Jonathan, watching his friend being treated like a common criminal, felt a surge of frustration. But he knew better than to resist. This wasn't just about the moment. It was about exposing the ugly truth behind what was happening. As McClellan tightened the cuffs around Marcus's wrists, Marcus held his head high, his composure unshaken. Despite the indignity of the situation, he knew the truth would come to light soon enough. The officer had no idea who he was dealing with, and Marcus wasn't about to let that fact slide. This officer needed to understand the gravity of his actions. Do you even know who I am? Marcus asked, his voice steady but filled with quiet authority. His words weren't meant as a threat, but as a reminder that McClellan had crossed a line. The officer had assumed the worst without knowing anything about the men standing before him, and now it was about to backfire. McClellan's smirk faded slightly as he processed Marcus's words, but his arrogance quickly took over. I don't care who you are, he spat. You're under arrest, and that's all that matters. You're just another perp to me. Jonathan, now being cuffed as well, exchanged a glance with Marcus. They had heard these kinds of insults before. Dismissive, dehumanizing words spoken by those who use their authority to oppress rather than protect. But this time, there would be consequences. You should care, Jonathan said calmly, because when you find out, you'll realize just how badly you've messed up. But McClellan wasn't listening. He was too busy basking in the temporary power he believed he held over the two men. His grip on their arms was firm as he led them to his patrol car, unaware of the storm that was about to break over his head. McClellan forced Marcus and Jonathan into the back of his patrol car with little regard for their rank or rights. His actions were rough and unnecessary, clearly meant to exert control and assert dominance over the situation. He believed he had complete authority over them now, and his aggression showed it. You're going to regret this, Marcus warned as McClellan slammed the door shut behind him. When you find out who we are, it'll be too late for you. McClellan scoffed at the remark. Oh, I'm sure, he sneered, circling back around to the driver's seat. You think being a cop gives you a free pass to do whatever you want? Not tonight. As the car sped through the empty streets, Jonathan and Marcus sat in the back, their calm demeanor a sharp contrast to McClellan's escalating hostility. They knew they were in for a rough ride, but they also knew it wouldn't last long. In their minds, they were already thinking ahead, planning the conversations they would have with McClellan's superiors, the complaints they would file, and the press coverage that would undoubtedly follow. You know, Jonathan said to Marcus with a small wry smile, he's going to be in for a shock when we get to the station. Marcus nodded, his own sense of irony creeping in despite the situation. Oh, no doubt but I'm looking forward to watching it unfold. McClellan, completely oblivious to the danger he was putting himself in, kept driving, fully believing that he was in control. He had no idea that he was driving straight into his own downfall. When they arrived at the station, McClellan was eager to display his arrests to the other officers. He marched Jonathan and Marcus into the booking area, his grip still firm on their arms, as if he was leading dangerous criminals into custody. The other officers at the station looked up, surprised to see the scene unfolding in front of them. Two black men in handcuffs, one of their colleagues dragging them in. What's going on here, McClellan? One of the officers asked, frowning at the sight. Caught these two causing trouble out on the street, McClellan replied, his voice brimming with pride. Resisted arrest, obstructed an investigation. The officers exchanged uneasy glances. Something didn't feel right about the situation. These men didn't look like troublemakers. In fact, one of the officers thought they looked strangely familiar. But before anyone could say anything further, McClellan started filling out the paperwork, still convinced that he had made the right call. 
Jonathan and Marcus remained silent, exchanging knowing looks. They knew this wasn't going to last much longer. The officer's smug confidence was only temporary, and soon enough, the truth would come crashing down on him. They could see the other officers starting to piece things together, recognizing them for who they truly were. Let's just get through this, Marcus said quietly to Jonathan, keeping his composure intact. It won't be long now. McClellan, still blind to the warning signs, continued the booking process with unnecessary force, confident that he was in the right. But that confidence would soon be shattered. Despite being treated like criminals, Jonathan and Marcus stayed calm throughout the entire booking process. They had been through enough in their careers to know that staying composed was the only way to handle a situation like this. Their years of experience in law enforcement had taught them patience, even in the face of injustice. They knew the truth would come out, and when it did, McClellan would have to answer for his actions. As they were led to a holding cell, Jonathan couldn't help but feel a sense of irony. Here they were, two captains in the police force, being treated like common criminals by a man who had no idea who they really were. It would have been almost laughable if it weren't so infuriating. Once inside the cell, Marcus leaned against the wall, his expression thoughtful. I wonder how long it'll take for someone to recognize us, he said with a slight smile. I give it five minutes before someone walks in here and realizes what a mess McClellan's made. Jonathan nodded, his own expression calm, but with a hint of satisfaction. It's going to be quite the show when it happens. Outside the holding cell, the atmosphere in the station was beginning to shift. More officers were starting to question McClellan's actions, and the whispers of doubt were growing louder. One officer, in particular, had already started checking the IDs McClellan had taken from Jonathan and Marcus. As he realized who they were, his face went pale. The officer turned to McClellan, his voice urgent. You need to stop this. Now. The atmosphere at the station grew increasingly tense as more officers began to realize the mistake McClellan had made. Word was spreading quickly. Two black men had been arrested under dubious circumstances, and now their true identities were coming to light. A murmur of confusion rippled through the station as more officers recognized Jonathan and Marcus, two captains who had earned the respect of many in the department. Inside the holding cell, Jonathan and Marcus waited patiently. They could sense the shift outside, knowing that it was only a matter of time before someone came to rectify the situation. McClellan, however, remained oblivious, continuing with the booking process as if nothing was wrong. He was still reveling in his perceived authority, thinking he had the situation under control. It wasn't long before the shift supervisor, Lieutenant Harris, was called to the scene. As soon as he arrived and saw Jonathan and Marcus in handcuffs, his face paled. He knew both men well, having worked with them on various cases over the years. The sight of them in a holding cell, arrested by one of his own officers, was shocking, to say the least. What the hell is going on here? Lieutenant Harris demanded, his voice sharp as he confronted McClellan. Do you have any idea who these men are? McClellan, caught off guard by the sudden attention, frowned in confusion. Yeah, I know who they are. Two guys who thought they were above the law, so I brought them in. Harris's eyes flashed with anger. They're captains, McClellan. Captains in this department. You just arrested two of your own superiors without cause. The realization hit McClellan like a freight train. His face drained of color as the weight of his actions began to sink in. As the gravity of his mistake dawned on him, McClellan's confident smirk vanished. He could hardly believe what he was hearing. Captains? How could he have been so blind? His pulse quickened as Lieutenant Harris's words echoed in his head. And for the first time that night, the full weight of his actions began to sink in. The two men he had aggressively arrested weren't just anyone. They were senior officers, his superiors. Panic set in, but McClellan struggled to maintain his composure. That can't be right, he muttered, shaking his head in disbelief. They didn't say anything. They didn't tell me they were captains. Lieutenant Harris glared at him, his voice rising with frustration. It's not their job to tell you that. You should have checked their IDs properly instead of making snap judgments based on, well, whatever you thought you saw. Do you have any idea what you've done? McClellan opened his mouth to respond, but no words came out. The situation was spiraling out of control, and there was no easy way out of it. 
he had arrested two innocent men on baseless charges simply because of the color of their skin and his own prejudices. Now, the realization that he had arrested his superiors left him feeling exposed and vulnerable. Jonathan and Marcus, still in the holding cell, exchanged knowing glances as they watched McClellan's world unravel. This was the moment they had been waiting for, the moment when the officer would finally realize the full extent of his error. Marcus stepped forward, his voice calm but firm. We tried to tell you. You didn't listen. McClellan's heart sank further as he turned to face the two captains. He was speechless, his bravado completely shattered. Lieutenant Harris wasted no time in taking control of the situation. He immediately ordered McClellan to release Jonathan and Marcus from their handcuffs, his voice filled with a quiet but unmistakable fury. Get those cuffs off of them now, Harris barked, his eyes locked on McClellan's every move. McClellan fumbled with the keys as he unlocked the handcuffs, his hands shaking slightly. The weight of his mistake was almost unbearable, and the reality of what he had done was sinking in with each passing second. He had crossed a line that couldn't be uncrossed, and the consequences were about to hit him harder than he ever expected. As soon as the cuffs were removed, Jonathan and Marcus rubbed their wrists, standing tall and composed, though the frustration in their eyes was clear. Harris turned to them, his expression filled with regret. Captains, I'm so sorry this happened, he said, his voice genuine. I had no idea this was going on. Believe me, this isn't how we do things here. Jonathan gave a small nod, his face calm but stern. It seems like some people need to be reminded of that. Marcus, standing beside him, crossed his arms. We've both seen this kind of thing before, Lieutenant, but we didn't expect to experience it here, among our own. Harris's face flushed with embarrassment. He had worked with both captains before and knew them to be men of integrity. The fact that one of his officers had treated them so poorly was a stain on the department's reputation. He turned back to McClellan, his voice hard. You're in deep trouble, McClellan. I hope you understand that. McClellan, still struggling to find the right words, nodded weakly. I... I didn't know, he stammered. I didn't realize. As the full weight of his actions began to settle over him, McClellan felt a sinking sensation in his gut. He had completely misread the situation from the beginning, driven by his own prejudices and assumptions. Now there was no way to undo the damage he had caused. He had arrested two police captains, his superiors without justification, and the consequences were becoming painfully clear. The station had grown quieter as more officers became aware of what was happening. Some watched from a distance, exchanging uneasy glances as they realized just how bad things were for McClellan. Others shook their heads in disbelief, wondering how one of their own could make such a colossal mistake. The tension in the air was thick, and it was clear that this incident would not be forgotten anytime soon. McClellan stood frozen in place, his mind racing as he tried to figure out a way to salvage the situation. But there was no going back. His actions had been reckless and fueled by nothing more than his own bias. Now he would have to face the fallout. Jonathan and Marcus, still standing tall and composed, watched as McClellan grappled with the reality of what he had done. They had seen this kind of behavior before, but it never got easier to witness. In their long careers, they had always fought against this kind of injustice, but now they had been personally targeted by it. Jonathan spoke first, his voice calm but authoritative. This isn't just about us, Officer McClellan. It's about how you treat people, no matter who they are. Marcus nodded in agreement. You saw two black men and made assumptions. That's the problem. And now you're going to have to answer for it. McClellan swallowed hard, realizing that there was no way out. His career was in jeopardy, and there was nothing he could do to change that. McClellan had already heard it from Lieutenant Harris, but hearing it directly from Jonathan and Marcus made the truth hit even harder. These weren't just two men he had wrongly arrested. These were police captains who outranked him, who had spent years serving the very department he was now disgracing. The realization left him feeling small and powerless, a far cry from the authority he had been so eager to flaunt. Jonathan stepped forward, his eyes steady as he addressed McClellan directly. Captain Jonathan Reed, he said, his voice calm but filled with unmistakable authority. I've been with this department for over 20 years, and in that time, I've seen officers like you abuse their power. 
but I never expected to be on the receiving end of it. Marcus followed suit, his voice just as steady. Captain Marcus Turner, I've spent my career fighting for justice, ensuring that officers like you don't get to treat people the way you just treated us. McClellan's face paled further. He felt his heart pounding in his chest as the weight of their words sank in. He had thought he was in control of the situation, but now it was clear that he had never been in control at all. His mind raced as he tried to process what was happening, but there was no way to undo what had been done. I... I didn't know, McClellan stammered again, his voice weak and unconvincing. That's the problem, Jonathan replied coldly. You didn't know because you didn't bother to find out. You made assumptions, and now you're going to face the consequences. McClellan felt a sinking feeling in the pit of his stomach. There was no escaping what was coming next. McClellan stood frozen as the full realization of his actions sank in. His mind raced, trying to come up with some excuse, some way to explain away the mistake, but nothing came. The panic in his chest grew with every second. He had acted on his prejudices, treated two innocent men with hostility, and now it was clear that these men were his superiors police captains who had earned their ranks through decades of service and dedication. His hands shook as he tried to process the situation. The smug authority he had worn like armor earlier in the night had completely crumbled. In its place, there was only fear. Fear of what was going to happen to him. Fear of the backlash that would surely follow. And fear of losing the career he had built, flawed though it may have been. Lieutenant Harris, sensing McClellan's growing panic, stepped forward, his voice stern. McClellan, I want you to understand something, Harris said sharply. There's no excuse for what you did tonight. You let your biases guide your actions and now you're going to have to answer for it. McClellan swallowed hard, his throat dry as he tried to muster a response. I didn't mean to, he began, but Harris cut him off. No, you did mean to, Harris snapped, his patience gone. You saw two black men and assumed they were criminals. You didn't bother to look at their IDs, didn't listen to a word they said. You treated them like suspects because that's what you wanted them to be. McClellan's mouth went dry. The room felt smaller now, the weight of everyone's eyes on him. Jonathan and Marcus stood watching, their calm, steady presence only making McClellan feel smaller by the second. There was no escaping the reality of what he had done. The station, once bustling with the usual energy of a busy night, had fallen into a tense silence. Officers who had been going about their duties now stood still, watching the drama unfold. Word of what had happened spread quickly, and it didn't take long for everyone to realize just how badly McClellan had misjudged the situation. The air was thick with a mixture of disbelief, anger, and unease. Many of the officers, having worked with Jonathan and Marcus before, were horrified at how they had been treated. As the tension in the room grew, Lieutenant Harris made it clear that McClellan's actions wouldn't go unpunished. We're going to review every step you took tonight, Harris said coldly. Your actions will be fully investigated, and I can guarantee you the department won't take this lightly. McClellan's panic only deepened. He could already feel his career slipping through his fingers, and the thought of an investigation filled him with dread. He had always operated with a sense of impunity, confident that his actions would be brushed under the rug. But this was different. There would be no hiding from this mistake. This was too big, too public. Jonathan, still calm but now stepping forward, looked McClellan in the eye. You've crossed a line, Officer McClellan. This isn't something you can just walk away from. There will be consequences. Marcus added, his voice steady. We've both dedicated our lives to ensuring that the law is applied fairly. What you did tonight goes against everything we stand for. The backlash was immediate. Officers who had once given McClellan the benefit of the doubt now turned away, disgusted by his actions. The weight of his reputation collapsing around him was palpable, and there was no way out. McClellan had never felt more alone. It didn't take long for the situation to escalate even further. Within the hour, higher-ranking officials within the police department had been notified of the incident. Word had reached the chief of police, and a formal inquiry was ordered. The arrival of internal affairs officers added another layer of gravity to the situation. What had started as a routine night patrol for McClellan had now spiraled into a full-scale investigation that could end his career. The officers from internal affairs, 
two stern-faced individuals with years of experience, approached Jonathan and Marcus first. They offered their apologies, expressing deep regret for what had occurred. Captains, we are truly sorry for what you've been through tonight, one of the investigators said. This is unacceptable, and we intend to get to the bottom of it. Jonathan nodded in response. We appreciate that, he said calmly. But this isn't just about us. It's about making sure something like this never happens again. Marcus, always the diplomat, added, We need to make sure that officers like McClellan are held accountable. The trust between law enforcement and the community is fragile enough as it is. Incidents like this can tear it apart. As the internal affairs officers began their interviews, McClellan sat in stunned silence. He had been removed from active duty for the night, pending the outcome of the investigation, and it was clear that things were moving quickly. Every decision he had made that night was being scrutinized, and for the first time in his career, he had no control over the outcome. The presence of the higher authorities left no doubt that McClellan's actions had crossed a line that couldn't be ignored. His career, once safe within the walls of his own biases, was now crumbling under the weight of his mistakes. As McClellan was led into the interrogation room by internal affairs, the reality of his situation hit him harder than ever. The smug confidence he had carried throughout the night had been replaced by a sense of dread. He had never expected that his actions would be subject to such intense scrutiny, especially not from his own department. Now he faced his superiors, and it was clear that they were not going to show him any leniency. Across the table sat two high-ranking officials from the department, their expressions stern and unforgiving. One was the deputy chief, a seasoned veteran who had little tolerance for misconduct, and the other was an internal affairs investigator known for his thorough and relentless investigations. Both men were here to hold McClellan accountable, and he could see in their eyes that they weren't here to protect him. Officer McClellan, the deputy chief began, his voice low but firm, you're here tonight because your actions are being called into question. What happened out there is a serious breach of protocol, and we're going to get to the bottom of it. McClellan swallowed hard, his mind racing as he tried to come up with an explanation that wouldn't incriminate him further. But there was no good excuse for what he had done. He knew that, and so did they. The internal affairs investigator leaned forward, his eyes cold. We've reviewed your history, Officer McClellan. This isn't the first time your conduct has been questioned, but it is by far the most serious incident. You arrested two of your superiors without cause, and that's something we take very seriously. McClellan shifted uncomfortably in his seat. He had no words to defend himself. Everything he had done that night had been driven by his own biases, and now he was paying the price. The investigation moved swiftly. Within days, the internal affairs team had gathered enough evidence to paint a clear picture of what had happened that night. McClellan's actions had been reckless, racially motivated, and completely unjustified. The fact that he had targeted two of his own superiors only made the situation worse. The department had no choice but to act, and the payback for McClellan's abuse of power came hard and fast. McClellan was suspended indefinitely, pending further disciplinary action. His badge and gun were taken, and he was escorted out of the station, no longer an officer in the eyes of the department. The once confident cop who had reveled in his authority now found himself stripped of everything he had worked for. His career, his reputation, and his sense of control had all been shattered in the span of a few days. The backlash wasn't limited to the department. News of the incident had leaked to the media, and soon McClellan's name and actions were being reported across the city. Headlines painted a damning picture of a cop who had let his biases drive him to arrest two high-ranking officers without cause. The public outcry was swift and fierce with calls for reform within the department growing louder by the day. Jonathan and Marcus, though deeply frustrated by the incident, were relieved to see justice being served. They had been through enough in their careers to know that these situations didn't always end with accountability. But this time, McClellan would face the consequences of his actions. It wasn't just about payback. It was about ensuring that officers like McClellan couldn't continue to operate unchecked. As McClellan sat in his apartment, staring blankly at the television screen, broadcasting the latest report on his suspension, he knew his life would never be the same. The fallout from McClellan's actions was immediate and widespread. 
Within days, the story had gone viral, sparking a wave of outrage both locally and nationally. News stations ran headline after headline. Racist cop arrests two police captains, officer suspended after racially motivated arrest, and department faces backlash after wrongful arrest of senior officers. The city, already on edge from recent tensions between law enforcement and the community, erupted in protests. The scandal put a spotlight not only on McClellan, but also on the department as a whole. Questions about racial profiling and abuse of power resurfaced, and many demanded answers. How could an officer with McClellan's history of complaints remain in the force for so long? The public wanted accountability, not just for McClellan, but for the system that had allowed him to thrive. The media frenzy was relentless. Jonathan and Marcus, though victims of the incident, found themselves at the center of the storm. Reporters camped outside their homes, eager for a comment or interview. Community leaders reached out, offering their support and calling for a press conference to address the situation. The captains, known for their integrity, handled the attention with grace, though they understood the magnitude of what was happening. Jonathan was the first to address the media, standing tall in his police uniform at a hastily arranged press conference. This incident highlights a problem that many people of color have experienced for far too long, he said, his voice steady but firm. We need to ensure that officers who abuse their power are held accountable. This is not just about one bad cop. It's about changing the culture that allows these things to happen. Marcus, standing beside him, nodded in agreement. We are not just captains in this department. We are also members of the community. What happened to us should never happen to anyone regardless of rank or status. Their words resonated with the public, and the calls for reform grew louder. Throughout the scandal, Jonathan and Marcus remained calm and composed, determined to use their platform for positive change. Despite the public attention and the media frenzy, they stayed focused on their core message. This wasn't just about their personal experience. It was about addressing a larger issue within law enforcement. They knew their voices carried weight, and they were determined to use them to fight for justice. Both captains refused to be seen as victims. Instead, they positioned themselves as advocates for reform, speaking out about the need for better training, accountability, and oversight within police departments across the country. Their integrity and professionalism shone through in every interview, every press conference, and every public statement they made. Being a captain in the police force doesn't exempt us from the realities that many people of color face every day, Marcus said during one interview. We were targeted because of our race, and that's something that needs to be addressed, not just for us, but for everyone. Jonathan echoed these sentiments during a televised appearance. We have a responsibility to ensure that our department serves and protects all members of the community fairly. We can't allow incidents like this to go unchecked. Their leadership throughout the ordeal earned them widespread respect, both within the police force and among the public. Officers who had worked with Jonathan and Marcus for years rallied behind them, expressing their support and admiration for how the captains had handled the situation. Even those who had been skeptical of change within the department began to see the importance of the issues being raised. It was clear that Jonathan and Marcus were not just pushing for personal justice, they were pushing for systemic change. As the investigation into McClellan's actions continued, more troubling details about his past came to light. It was soon revealed that the officer had a history of complaints and misconduct, many of which had been quietly dismissed or ignored over the years. Internal documents showed that McClellan had been involved in multiple incidents of excessive force, racial profiling, and abuse of authority, yet he had faced little more than a slap on the wrist for his actions. The public was outraged when the extent of McClellan's misconduct was exposed. How had this officer managed to remain on the force for so long despite such a troubling record? The revelations sparked widespread calls for a deeper investigation into the department's handling of complaints and the lack of accountability for officers like McClellan. Protesters took to the streets, holding signs that read, justice for all, end racial profiling, and hold bad cops accountable. The pressure on the department intensified as more stories about McClellan's behavior came to light, including testimonies from civilians who had been mistreated by him in the past. The floodgates had opened, and now there was no turning back. 
The Internal Affairs Department, already conducting an investigation into the wrongful arrest of Jonathan and Marcus, expanded its scope to include a review of McClellan's entire career. Every complaint, every disciplinary action, or lack thereof, and every questionable arrest was now being scrutinized. Meanwhile, Jonathan and Marcus continued to speak out, emphasizing that McClellan was not an isolated case. This isn't just about one officer, Jonathan said in an interview. This is about a system that allows bad officers to operate without consequence. We need to rebuild trust between the police and the communities we serve, and that starts with accountability. The department could no longer ignore the mounting evidence against McClellan. The investigation into his conduct revealed not only the wrongful arrest of the two captains, but also a pattern of behavior that violated the very principles of law enforcement. The decision was swift and decisive. McClellan was officially terminated from the police force, and the department announced that it would be implementing stricter measures to prevent similar incidents from occurring in the future. McClellan's termination was met with mixed reactions. For those who had been following the story closely, it was a clear sign that justice was being served. Many saw it as a necessary step in addressing the larger issues within the department. However, there were also those within the force who viewed McClellan's firing as a betrayal, a sign that the department was bending to public pressure. But for Jonathan and Marcus, the outcome was not about personal revenge. It was about ensuring that officers like McClellan no longer had the power to abuse their authority. They had fought for accountability, not just for themselves, but for the community they had sworn to protect. The decision to remove Officer McClellan was the right one, Jonathan said at a press conference following the announcement. But this isn't the end of the fight. We need to make sure that reforms are put in place to prevent this from happening again. Marcus, standing beside him, added, We need to create a culture of accountability within law enforcement. Every officer, regardless of rank, should be held to the highest standard. The consequences for McClellan didn't end with his termination. Civil rights organizations, bolstered by the captain's leadership, began pursuing legal action against him for the harm he had caused over the years. McClellan found himself facing lawsuits, financial ruin, and the complete dismantling of the life he had once known. The story of McClellan's wrongful arrest of Jonathan and Marcus continued to dominate the headlines. News outlets across the country covered the incident extensively, and the public outcry showed no signs of slowing down. What had begun as a local issue had now become a national conversation about police misconduct, racial profiling, and the urgent need for reform within law enforcement. Television segments, opinion pieces, and social media posts dissected the details of the case. Civil rights activists used the platform to call for broader reforms, while political leaders weighed in on the growing movement for police accountability. The images of Jonathan and Marcus, two high-ranking black police captains wrongfully arrested by one of their own, became symbols of the systemic issues within policing. Captains Jonathan Reed and Marcus Turner represent everything that is right about law enforcement, one commentator said during a primetime broadcast. They are men of integrity, men who have dedicated their lives to serving their communities, and yet even they were not immune to the racial bias that permeates our system. The coverage sparked outrage across the country. Protest marches, town hall meetings, and community forums were organized to address the issues of racial profiling and police misconduct. Activists held signs bearing Jonathan and Marcus's names, and their story became a rallying cry for change. For Jonathan and Marcus, the media attention was overwhelming, but they remained focused on the bigger picture. They used every opportunity to speak out about the need for reform, never losing sight of the fact that their story represented the experiences of countless others who had faced similar injustices. This isn't just about us, Jonathan said during one interview. There are people all over this country who have been targeted because of their race. We're fighting for them. Shall I continue with the final chapters? Let me know how you're feeling about the story, and I'll proceed. Você disse, continue. O chat GPT disse, let's continue the story with the final chapters. Ponanei, it won't cut to the 26. Support for the captains grows. As the story gained traction, support for Jonathan and Marcus grew exponentially. Communities across the nation rallied behind the two captains, 
recognizing their ordeal as emblematic of a much larger issue. Social media campaigns flooded the internet with hashtags like justice for captains, Reed and Turner, and Alcaraz accountability in blue trending. Their integrity and calm response in the face of injustice inspired many, becoming a beacon for those fighting against racial profiling and police misconduct. Civil rights organizations, local activists, and even fellow law enforcement officers voiced their support. Colleagues from across the country, both black and white, sent messages of solidarity, recognizing the courage it took for Jonathan and Marcus to stand up, not only for themselves, but also for the broader principle of justice. Police departments that valued integrity began reviewing their own practices, while others quietly removed officers with troubling records, sensing the tide was turning. At public events, rallies, and interviews, the captains were greeted with applause and admiration. But through it all, they remained focused on their core mission, reforming a broken system. Neither man wanted the spotlight, but they used it to advocate for change. Jonathan, in one particularly moving speech at a town hall meeting, spoke of the responsibilities that came with wearing the badge. As officers, we swore an oath to serve and protect, not to discriminate or abuse our power, Jonathan said. This fight isn't about making anyone feel guilty. It's about making sure every officer upholds that oath, regardless of the color of someone's skin. Marcus echoed his partner's words at a community meeting, urging law enforcement to take responsibility. We can't rebuild trust in our communities unless we hold ourselves accountable, he said. This is a fight for justice, for everyone. Their words resonated deeply, and more people joined the call for comprehensive reforms, pushing for policies that would prevent officers like McClellan from slipping through the cracks again. Two seven, justice takes its course. As the investigation into McClellan's misconduct drew to a close, it became clear that the department had no choice but to pursue legal action. The charges against him were extensive, ranging from unlawful arrests to civil rights violations. His once untouchable position as an officer was now entirely compromised, and justice was catching up to him swiftly. The case went to court, where McClellan faced a barrage of evidence outlining his history of misconduct. Victims of his previous abuses came forward, emboldened by Jonathan and Marcus's bravery. Their testimonies painted a damning picture of a man who had repeatedly exploited his authority, targeting minorities and using his badge as a weapon of oppression. In the courtroom, McClellan cut a different figure than the once confident officer. He looked worn, defeated, and unprepared for the consequences of his actions. He had assumed, like many before him, that his uniform would protect him from accountability. But with the weight of the evidence and the public outrage, it was clear that his time had run out. The jury deliberated for only a short time before returning with a guilty verdict. McClellan was sentenced to prison, his fall from grace complete. His conviction sent a powerful message to law enforcement across the country. Officers who abused their power would no longer be shielded by their badge. For Jonathan and Marcus, the court's decision was a victory, not just for themselves, but for the community they had fought to protect. Justice had been served, but they knew this was only the beginning. They were determined to continue advocating for reforms that would prevent this kind of abuse from happening to anyone else. The system worked this time, Jonathan said after the trial, but it shouldn't take captains being wrongfully arrested for action to be taken. We need to keep fighting to make sure that every person is treated with dignity and respect, no matter who they are. 28. The Officer's Fall from Grace McClellan's fall from grace was swift and brutal. Once a man who wielded his authority with unchecked arrogance, he now found himself stripped of his badge, his freedom, and the life he had built. His former colleagues distanced themselves from him, unwilling to be associated with someone whose name had become synonymous with abuse of power and racial profiling. As the media continued to cover the aftermath of the trial, McClellan became a symbol of everything that was wrong within law enforcement, a cautionary tale of what could happen when prejudice went unchecked. His family, once proud of his career, now struggled to reconcile the man they knew with the monster the world saw. They, too, faced the public scrutiny that came with being associated with him. 
McClellan's life unraveled further as civil lawsuits from his victims piled up. Financial ruin followed as settlements drained his savings and left him with nothing. The very power he had once used to oppress others had turned against him, and he found himself at the mercy of the justice system he had once believed would protect him. Inside prison, McClellan was just another inmate, stripped of the authority and control he had once wielded so freely. He was left to reflect on the choices that had led him here, haunted by the faces of the people he had wronged, particularly Jonathan and Marcus. In the quiet of his cell, he could no longer hide behind his badge or his uniform. The truth of who he was had been laid bare for the world to see. Meanwhile, Jonathan and Marcus continued to move forward with their lives, grateful that justice had been served, but ever aware of the work that still needed to be done. Twenty-nine, a lesson in power and respect. The wrongful arrest of Jonathan and Marcus became more than just a moment in history. It became a turning point for many in law enforcement. Departments across the country began reassessing their training programs, focusing on de-escalation techniques and the importance of cultural sensitivity. The captain's story was integrated into training materials, used as an example of what happens when an officer allows bias to cloud their judgment. Jonathan and Marcus were invited to speak at law enforcement conferences where they shared their experiences and emphasized the importance of accountability within the force. Their story became a powerful reminder that no one was above the law, not even the officers sworn to uphold it. We need to teach officers that power is not something to be used recklessly, Jonathan said during a speech at a police reform summit. It's a responsibility, and with that responsibility comes the need to treat every person with respect. Marcus followed, adding, Respect isn't something you give based on rank or status. It's something you owe to every human being, regardless of who they are or what they look like. Their words resonated deeply with audiences, and many officers came away from these events with a renewed sense of purpose. The captain's story served as a lesson, not just in the dangers of abuse of power, but in the importance of humility and respect in policing. It became clear that true justice could only be achieved when officers understood that their power came with limits and that those limits were in place to protect everyone, including themselves. 30. A new chapter for the captains. With the scandal behind them and justice served, Jonathan and Marcus were able to move forward, their reputations not only intact but elevated. They returned to their roles as captains, where they continued to lead with integrity and respect, using their experience to mentor younger officers and push for lasting change within their department. The department itself had changed too. Policies were put in place to ensure that complaints of misconduct were taken seriously and officers like McClellan would no longer be able to slip through the cracks. The culture of accountability that Jonathan and Marcus had fought so hard to instill was beginning to take root and the trust between the department and the community slowly began to rebuild. For the captains, the experience had been painful, but it had also been transformative. They had always known the challenges that came with being black men in law enforcement, but now they had experienced firsthand the consequences of unchecked prejudice. It had strengthened their resolve to continue fighting for justice, not just for themselves, but for everyone. As they looked to the future, both men knew that the road ahead would not be easy, but they were ready to face it together. Their bond, forged through years of partnership and tested by adversity, was stronger than ever. And with that bond came a shared commitment to ensuring that the next generation of officers would serve with the dignity, respect, and fairness that every community deserved. In the end, the captain's story was not just one of personal redemption. It was a story of hope, change, and the power of standing up for what is right, even when the odds seem stacked against you.